Thank you, Michele. And uh, once again, thank you, everybody, for being here with us today. Uh, I want to uh, welcome all of you to Spotlight on Salto, uh, a series of six online info sessions aimed at highlighting the opportunities of the Erasmus Plus uh, Youth and uh, European Solidarity Corps programs. Uh, we hope that uh, today and with all the you know, all these sessions, you will get the chance to learn more about the activities and the tools uh, of Salto Resource Centers, but also in especially, uh, hopefully, the humans behind all the work that um, is being done. Uh, yeah, this is our fifth session already. It's been a, a busy month, uh, a lot of uh, interesting things we have been discussing with, through this session sessions, please, if you have not participated in them previously, do uh, check them out uh, on social media. They are there for you to see uh, and get acquainted maybe with um, the rest of the Salto, Salto Resource Centers. And today, of course, uh, we have inclusion in the spotlight with Salto Inclusion and Diversity. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will talk about everything you wanted to know about inclusion and diversity, but uh, we're afraid to ask. Hopefully this uh, online session will, will bring you some answers and perhaps some more questions, who knows? Uh, because this is such a, uh, a juicy topic, right? With so many ways to look at it and understand it. So hopefully this, this will bring in some, some new perspectives for you. Very briefly, I will take you through what we will do today. Um, We'll start a session, um, for those of you who were in the previous ones, you will know we love to build connection between uh, you, the people who are participating and doing all this amazing job on a local, national or international level, uh, and the teams behind the Salto Resource Centers. So we st we'll start just with that. Uh, then, uh, but we will, we will uh, have some space for you to get to know the people behind Salto. Uh, with the famous quiz that Michele introduced. Then we'll take you through some interactive journey, which hopefully will uh, support you in better understanding the work that Salto Inclusion and Diversity does. Yeah, we'll look at the past, the present, the future, and uh, yeah, we, we truly hope that this journey is as interactive as possible. So please do ask any questions you may have uh, as we go along uh, in the chat, in the Zoom chat, or in the Facebook comments if you're watching us there. Uh, we would really love to have you live with us. So if you would like to ask us a question, please uh, write to Michele or I or in the chat, in general chat, and we will get you live to ask your question. That would be great to, to see your faces, to hear your voices. And by the, yeah, we'll, by the end of the, the online session, we will also have some space for more Q&A in case uh, there are some things that are left uh, unanswered. So this is what we will do today. Uh, hopefully be with you here for an hour and a half maximum and uh, be, be together. So to introduce myself, I am Dani and I will be the facilitator for this event together with Michele, who is our digital facilitator and Vanda, who is our graphic recorder. We will see some of her work as we go along as well. All right. So before we get it going, I just want us to arrive at this meeting. I know that many times we jump from meeting to meeting and just take a, a minute to, to arrive here fully present, open and connected with, with the others. And uh, yeah, very, very shortly, I will invite everybody to, yeah, if you feel comfortable to close your eyes or keep a lower gaze and yeah, just take a really deep, deep breath in and the breath out. And as you do that, I, I would like you to, to think about how does inclusion and diversity feel, taste, look like for you? Try to connect with the concepts and how does that resonate with you personally? And let's just take another big 
breath in and out and then we can open our eyes and if you feel comfortable i i would invite you all to type in the chat uh, anything that came up for you anything that you would like to share uh, how does inclusion and diversity feel like taste maybe look like for you put it there to see uh, how is it for each and every one of you i will be following the chat to see your answers there mm -hmm. togetherness thank you Gilles. Mm -hmm. a natural feeling amazing okay okay dear people so let's get it going then uh i'm gonna invite maria with me here to start us off in uh, getting a bit of an insight on the team and uh, hello, oh, welcome. Hello, mm -hmm. Welcome everybody. Greetings from Belgium, very hot today. Um, and this is a hot topic as well. Um, so my name is Marie Kleitsch. I'm representing South Inclusion and Diversity Resource Center uh, together with my colleagues, Tony and Enrique. Maybe you can wave just so people see you. Yeah, and um, it's three of us. Uh, we are based in uh, Belgium. We are part of the Flemish National Agency for Erasmus Plus Youth in Action Program, European Solidarity Corps program. And actually, last 20 years, uh, we've been uh, working on making EU youth mobility uh, programs more accessible and open to all young people. You will have a chance to hear more about that and our journey over uh, last 20 years and also what the future uh, is bringing for, for all of us a bit later. Uh, I also would like just to say that we have, have a special guest today as well as uh, our colleague Marta from the commission. So you will have a chance, hi Marta, you will have a chance to, to meet Marta uh, a bit later too as well. And, but we were thinking maybe to start with something light and fun. And also, as Dani said, um, to use this chance also to get to, to know uh, people behind the, the resource centers. So we have prepared a small quiz for you. Uh, we are ready to share some, might be possibly even embarrassing uh, facts with you, but we hope they're <laughs> just fun and, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's um, it just, yeah, sharing some uh, moments from from previous years uh, with you. Some of the moments were a bit dangerous as well. So let's see what what happened. Um, yeah, to, to us while working for South Inclusion and Diversity. Uh, so, Michaela, if you could maybe start the quiz. I also would uh, ask all of you just to take maybe your mobile devices, your phones, and to uh, go to menti.com. I suppose that's probably already in the chat. The link is probably in the chat as well. And you can see the password already on the, on the slide. So five people are already with us in Menti. We will wait a few more moments for more people to join and then we can, uh, then we can start. So yeah, this is uh, our team photo taken uh, last year in the middle of the Corona crisis. Good, okay, we have 15 people already joined. More, great. We have some tigers and lions and strawberries with us and rabbits. So it's a really diversity of, <laughs> of creatures here. Good. Okay, 23, let's wait a few more seconds and then we can start. 20. Bye. I think, Michaela, we could start, yeah? Good. So the first question is, what was the name of the Salto office cat? So we used to have an office cat. Was the cat named uh, Madonna, Priscilla, or Beyonce? What do you think? And actually, the name was voted uh, by people on a Facebook. And... Uh, it was our neighbor's cat. She used to come over the balcony uh, to our office. Yeah, Priscilla, so 11 people got this right. We used to uh, have Priscilla with us in 2011, but then um, we had to move from that floor and colleagues who took uh, over the office were allergic to cats. 
Good. Tony, anything to say about Priscilla? She was very fluffy. So, <laughs> and she's uh, dearly missed. But yeah, life goes on. <laughs> but we will never find out the, the, the like original name of Priscilla because it was a neighbor's cat and we never get a chance to ask uh, about uh, her real name. Good. Next question, Michele, please. So the question number two is, I think this one is about the dangerous work situations we faced in the past. So what happened to, to us in, a, in, in the past? Falling in a puddle uh, of a mud in the front of ID colleagues, being almost hit by a car in Ireland, having a, a training on a border with uh, Syria in the middle of the conflict, almost falling off a, a carriage on an unexpected horse race in Moldova, getting stuck in a busy road in Tbilisi and not being able to cross the street without help of a colleague, or being taken to the airport on a speedboat in Turkey. So you can see it's um, very adventurous uh, working for Salto Inclusion and Diversity. And as Blanca is saying, all sounds possible. That might be uh, a lot of things happened in, uh, in 20 years. <laughs> Let's see. Time's up. So what's the correct answer? Everybody uh, answered this correctly because all this happened to us and more dangerous things. But we, it, it was just too much to share everything. Good. So this is me being taken by speedboat to the airport. It was fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Thank you, Michele. So the next, next question. Okay, which member of our Salto ID team used to play in a band? So we have some um, superstars with us. Was that me, Tony, or Enrique? What do you think? Who has the musical talent in our team? It doesn't mean with voice. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay, five people thought it was me, but no, it was Enrique. So Enrique. Would you like to share with us which kind of music did, did you play and what kind of band was well, it? I actually played in uh, several bands from uh, experimental rock to heavy metal and also played some genres that I will not share because it's too embarrassing. But I uh, went from aspiring rock star to playing uh, music in Erasmus Plus projects and I want to believe that that was uh, an added value for Erasmus Plus and somehow increased the quality of the projects. Yeah, and actually I... I uh... Enrique already has the next gig uh, booked, no? Enrique? I'm supposed to open for uh, one of the events that we are organizing in the end of uh, this month. So Inspire. if you are joining uh, Inspire Conference, you will hear Enrique playing there, live. Good. Thank you, Enrique. Michele, next one, please. So the fourth question is about who is a person from our team who hasn't done a uh, former EVS uh, project or European Solidarity Corps volunteering? Was that me, Enric, or Tony? So two people from the team were our former uh, European volunteers. Okay. 13 people thought it was Tony and that's true. Tony, why didn't you do EVS? So here is Tony in that volunteering in Nepal. Because I was on different volunteer projects, because I was slightly too old for uh, EVS uh, when it started. It was still only till 25 years. And I was just in my last year of university, so I had other things. And then uh, part of the, like an internship for um, international and intercultural management, postgraduate studies, uh, was going to a development project. So this is me with the father of the host family where I stayed now. Amazing. But Tony, you did also a lot of uh, work camps, yeah? So my background organize, organization is uh, Service Civil International, uh, yeah. Yeah, doing work camps all over the world. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, Enrique, where did you do your uh, volunteering service? Uh, I did it in Prague in 2013. I did mine in Belgium, surprise, surprise, <laughs> uh, 15 years ago, and I'm here now, still. And she got <laughs> stuck. <laughs> yeah, that happens when you go abroad. Good. Um, next one, please. Thank you. Oops, okay, 
if somebody was quick, then it got to see the answer already. But let's see first what's the question. Yes, so what was the name of the first event that we ever organized um, in 20 years ago? Was that Embracing Diversity, Bridges for Training, or ID Forum? What do you think? What was the name of our first event ever? Okay, time is up. So yeah, 11 people thought it was Bridges for Training, and that's true. It was organized by Tony, not Tony. Yeah, in 2000. Let's see the answer. <laughs> we have the answer, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might help. It's so long time ago, I can't remember. Yes. <laughs> but it was 2001, just a few days after 9-11. Uh, so that was my, my first event. I was only working for a few uh, months in Salto. And then someone decides to uh, fly planes into the Twin Towers. And all of a sudden, people ask me, like, so you will cancel your event? No? And I was like, ah. So it was a little bit of a, a challenge and also at the event there was lots of emotion about it so we had to make it part of the topics uh, that were discussed amongst trainers like okay what does this mean for our training work and so it was a challenging that. start tony but you stayed it was. at the center i survived yeah <laughs> good thank you so michela could we see who won though this is not a competition but still it's nice to see who yes we have the who, final who leaderboard yeah. We have the final leaderboard coming, and here it comes. Thank you. Might be some of our colleagues. I don't know who is Simba, but it seems... No, no, it's not Simba who won. Oh, this is very exciting. It will take some time. Yeah, it is. I don't know who is Simba. Simba, if you want to reveal your um, real identity, that's welcome. Uh, but yeah, it seems you know us well. Uh, Giselle. Giselle, Giselle our count. colleague, whom you will also have a chance to meet at, at the end of um, at this session and next session, she will um, be with you as well. So Giselle from Salt, from Salt Training and Cooperation Center. So thank you. Yeah, uh, good. So Michaela, I think we are done then with the quiz. Thank you. And then I pass the floor, floor, virtual floor back to Danny. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was fun. That was a fun journey to have to get to know you. And uh, it looked from the chat that everybody was enjoying this very much as well. All right. A lot of a lot of experience. That it seems like it brought you all three and uh, all the people who have been working uh, with Salto Inclusion and Diversity until now. A lot of experiences that brought us all here in this moment, which is really exciting mm -hmm. uh, for another 20 years or more, hopefully more, right? Great. So uh, let's continue then. Uh, this was uh, yeah, uh, a chance for you to hear a bit more about uh, the team and the work uh, and the fun, of course, behind uh, South Inclusion and Diversity. Uh, and now I would, I would like to invite Tony here with me uh, to, to explore a bit together uh, to take you all actually on, on a journey, right? Uh, starting from the past and going slowly towards the future in understanding a bit more um, about the work, uh, the framework and uh, everything that makes uh, Salto inclusion and diversity be as it is uh, right now. Hello, Tony. Hi there. Uh, so I hear that you've been uh, with Salto Inclusion and Diversity for, for quite some time. Uh, and it would be really nice to, to have the chance to, 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 to get people with you on this journey of, of sharing a bit about uh, where does actually Salto Inclusion and Diversity come from? Uh, what is its history? And uh, yeah, take us, take us with you in time, please. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. Um, before I take you on the trip uh, down memory lane, uh, maybe your first question that you can type in the chat. What is your age? Not because we're ageist. I mean, we like young, fresh ideas and we also like people with experience. But just to know how much I should explain things from the past or maybe you all know already uh, the programs that were there. I see people in their 30s, 20s. Yeah, also some uh, 
uh, older people like me, that's probably why they asked me to do the history of uh, Salto, because uh, indeed uh, it was uh, one of my first jobs back in, uh, in 2000. Anyway, where does this uh, Salto come from? Yeah. You know the youth programs, the European youth programs. Yeah, they used to be called a little bit different. Now we have the Erasmus Plus and Solidarity Corps, but they used to be called Youth in Action, or before that, the youth program, or even EVS or Youth for Europe. Anyway, so there was a European program for young people, and it was implemented by national agencies. Great. So implementing also means our national agency colleagues were doing lots of training to explain to people how does this work, how they can get funding, how can they do great uh, activities. Super. But for some topics, it was a little bit difficult to be doing that, uh, especially when it comes to uh, working on very specific target groups. And like if you only have one and a half organization that works on, I don't know, uh, uh, lesbian and gay youth or on disability or whatever, then it's a bit difficult as an NA to have enough participants for that. So in 99, the, uh, the national agencies, they decided, let's create a central structure that can do those things above or for the national agencies. Yeah. Um, and that's how the commission then decided, yes, it's a good idea. And in September 2000, um, uh, the uh, Salto network was born. Now, I have a question. And with this question, you can win a prize. We have solar uh, power banks yeah, to give energy to all your projects. But I have to say, national agencies and Saltos or the team cannot play. So what does Salto Youth stands for officially? It's one of those European abbreviations. Who knows? NA is not allowed to play. Salto is not allowed to play. Commission? Tra, 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 tra. Commission not allowed to play. <laughs> Or maybe this means that we only have uh, colleagues there. <laughs> yeah. I think Tony. In case. Yeah. Uh, okay. Tony, would you be up to also awarding the most creative interpretation of Salto Youth in case the correct answer is not there? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you can do that. So uh, you can try it. Everybody, I will invite you to to put it there. <laughs> yeah. What would be the the most uh, fun or interesting uh, abbreviation or uh, full name for Salto. Salto toast on offer. Yeah. <laughs> voilà. We should have that more in the morning. Uh, <laughs> good. But anyway, um, it has had some discussions, but it stands for Sal uh, Support Advanced Learning uh, support and advanced learning and training opportunities. So SALTO for youth projects. So uh, voila. Um, it started with a small group of countries. Um, I suppose that some of you remember who those four are. Can you write in the chat? Which were the first four SALTOs that were created in September 2000? Or in which countries were they? Four countries, anyone? Oh, Germany is correct, Belgium, yes. UK was there, indeed. Now they're not there anymore for some Brexit reasons. And one is missing, France. No. So we started uh, already uh, back in 2000 um, to... Um, work on inclusion, so in our resource center, but it, it was just a half time position. So I was only half of me and I was just doing uh, training courses. Soon, however, we realized there's a lot more that we can do on inclusion and diversity. So then it expanded, yeah. Um, and now we are three colleagues, but uh, a bit of news, we are looking for a fourth colleague. So follow our social media and uh, you might get the, the job at uh, in case you're interested to join the Salto uh, Inclusion and Diversity Family. That's great. It's good to hear a bit of the background and um, get a chance to, to travel a bit with 
oh. you muted yourself by yeah. mistake. By mistake, yeah. I don't know where did I cut, but definitely I wanted to, to share that. Uh, it seemed like the competition is on in the chat. Um, so definitely uh, made us go with you uh, with this uh, time travel. Uh, I wonder maybe one, before we move on, to ask everybody, what was the first time that you interacted with uh, Salto inclusion and diversity for the first time? If you remember, what was the context? What was like, the event, the publication, or anything else in between this? So please put it in the chat so that we, uh, we know when did you first uh, get in touch with Salto inclusion and diversity? All right. So as people are, are doing that, <laughs> as people are doing that, uh, I, will, I would like to ask you, Tony, if you could uh, share with us a bit, how does Salto inclusion and diversity fit into the, the bigger scheme, right? We have all these actors uh, that create uh, the context for, for this to happen. Uh, yeah. Share with us a, a little bit about this, make a bit of clarity um, for us. I prepared a short uh, PowerPoint uh, for this. Um, so here it is. <laughs> so basically, once upon a time, we were created for supporting this. Uh, now it's called Erasmus Plus and Solidarity Corps, but it used to be the youth programs yeah, back in, in 2000. And supporting the quality was also doing training. You know? um, of course, we were not the only ones doing it. I already mentioned that uh, the national agencies did their own activities uh, to inform all the beneficiaries and to um, uh, find partners for them, uh, to do training uh, for them, etc. You know? um, besides the NA, there was also the partnership, so between the European Commission and the Council of Europe, because the Council of Europe was already doing youth worker training for a long time, so uh, they decided to join forces on certain topics like uh, human rights education, so they did um, uh, training for that. Um, then there was SALTO, as I explained, to do some uh, training on topics that were more overarching, let's say. And of course, uh, there's also the possibilities for NGOs, so for the applicants to do their own uh, training. So they could apply in those days, it was action. I can't remember action uh, something, but uh, like now the mobility of youth uh, workers. Yeah, Of course, organizations can apply to have uh, seminars or training courses uh, that they organize themselves. So that was a little bit the predecessor of the European training strategy we have today. Yeah. But thanks to this and all the different people involved, we feel a little bit like a spider. Mm -hmm. I hope nobody has arachnophobia, but uh, because of all the different activities going on, we, we had privileged contacts with our national agencies because we were doing training courses that they thought would be useful for their um, uh, beneficiaries. Yeah, since it was training for the commission programs, also we were in close contact with the European Commission. Um, the NGOs, so at all the training courses, we meet the NGOs and sometimes on the bottom there you see UIP, so young people, they also participate in some events, even though our main focus for our training is the NGOs and the national agencies. And then other, could be other networks that sometimes we liaise to, whether that's uh, umbrella organizations, whether that's the partnership, uh, whether that's uh, other European programs uh, that have similar target groups, etc. Um, and just to show how important the connections are, uh, we also have today with us someone from the Commission, mm -hmm. so, because we have a, a great uh, connection uh, with the colleagues there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for mentioning Marta. I think, uh, hello and welcome, welcome with us here. I think she definitely, uh, is the person to ask maybe this question around uh, um, supporting us to understand a bit the more strategic pers perspective when it comes to inclusion and uh, diversity. Uh, Marta, hello, would you like to share a bit about this and how do you see that? Thanks, Nani. And uh, I very much love the spider net by, by Tony because sometimes I, I have the feeling that, that it's really true because spider nets are very much interconnected. So you feel really together with uh, with all the parts of the spider nets, but also you get stuck to it and it's very difficult to, to get away. So at, at some point we, we all are so passionate about all this and, and, and like uh, each other so much that, uh, that sometimes it's difficult to think what you would do if you would not be part of this uh, spider net. But okay, uh, apart from uh, these uh, metaphors, uh, um, just to share a little bit what, uh, what was this, uh, 
uh, reason why of giving more strategic thinking no, behind inclusion and diversity in the, in the two programs. And maybe to go back to the preparations of this new uh, Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Core, I think we started uh, three years ago, maybe reflecting what would be the areas that we want to strengthen. We know that our programs are, uh, are successful. Erasmus Plus and the European Solidarity Core are doing a lot uh, for young people, for organizations, for, for the stakeholders in the field, but we felt there is still more that we could do. And working more on inclusion and diversity was one of the areas that was very clear put on the table from the beginning, where we could go, work more, increase the quality of, of the work that we, we do, and also the visibility about the importance of, of having more inclusive uh, programs. Of course, in the youth field, uh, perhaps it's the field out of all the all the fields covered by uh, by Erasmus Plus, where uh, inclusion and diversity works started, and as uh, Maria and, uh, and also Tony were sharing uh, before, there, there was a lot of good work done in the past, and this work also served as an inspiration on why we should focus more more efforts also on inclusion and, and diversity. And the role of Salto was uh, key in, in, in this progression and in showing that having a support structure uh, like Salto helping national agencies uh, flagging where the important areas of work uh, can be and, and to support them also with uh, capacity building, with, with competencies, with networking opportunities, was something that, that is really useful uh, uh, to, to progress together. And this is why we came up also with the idea of taking the experience of the uh, inclusion and diversity strategy that worked until now only in the youth field to bring it one step further and make it cover all the fields of the Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Core uh, programs. It is also the idea of, uh, as Tony was saying before, to bring also some organization to the things that are uh, being done. No? Uh, in the other fields, in the school field, the vocational education and training field, in higher education, there are very good practices also on inclusion and diversity. And we know that we had also uh, very valuable experiences. But sometimes we didn't have a clear overview of uh, an organization on how this is working and where are the areas where we can improve. So in order to, to identify what, how you can improve, you need to know also where you stand and where you do better, where you, you do worse and, and, and where you can really put more efforts. And these are the main areas of, of work that we identify for the next seven years. First of all, trying to have some more clear concepts who are the target groups that we are uh, uh, trying to reach out to uh, how do we denominate uh, and, and to identify uh, why these target groups should be reached out um, and, and if possible also in a transversal manner? Uh, because in many cases, no matter what is the sector of the program, we are addressing very similar people or even the same people. Uh, because you may attend school, but then you may also be part of a youth club or, uh, or of a sport club. So at the end, we, we want to have this person-centered uh, uh, approach. And then at the same time that this, this identification of the targets helps us also monitoring, reporting and, and putting forward actions that can help us improve. All of this, we do it together. Working with Salto, it's really a very pleasant uh, experience. In, in, in the near future, we also want to set up a Salto uh, in the same domain for inclusion and diversity, supporting the education and training fields and together that we really provide the necessary support to national agencies, to organizations, and from our side, it's also a learning experience in the commission. I, I love every chance that, uh, that I have to work with Tony, with Maya, with Enrique, and with, with all the trainers, facilitators that, that run the events. Because for me, it's always also a learning experience every day. So it's, it's a very challenging, but at the same time, very rewarding uh, project to work on. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. I think it just only shows what you're sharing that this goes in all directions, right? The work on inclusion and diversity from uh, top to bottom, bottom down and all, all directions. Uh, uh, this is important and all this work uh, contributes and comes together in a really beautiful way. So thank you for, for uh, framing the context for, for us. And maybe to quickly add uh, mm -hmm. before we go on, uh, um, I remember my first um, uh, meeting at the Commission that you have to go into this big uh, European uh, building and you think like, oh, this is the ivory tower. And then you notice that after uh, all these years, there are so many people who are actually 
on your side uh, from the Commission as well. So uh, we are in this together and that's a uh, nice in this working relationship. So it's uh, very much appreciated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tony, for that addition. Uh, and uh, yes, indeed, uh, it's good to have in the room with us people from different uh, countries, from different uh, perhaps roles. So uh, please do also share in the chat if there are uh, any perspectives that you would like to bring or any questions that you may have for, for the speakers. All right, and now we are seeing uh, Vanda's uh, beautiful graphic recording of what we have been discussing so far. Uh, and even Priscilla made it. Even Priscilla made it there. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Great to have her with us uh, here as well. <laughs> All right, great. So, yeah, we speak about uh, inclusion, we speak about diversity, and maybe it would be a good time now to uh, frame these two concepts and look a bit at them and see what are they exactly in terms of uh, content, what do they mean, but also what is the difference uh, between the two of them? Are they the same? Are they not? Uh, tell us a bit about that, Tony. Okay. Um, so the, as far as I remember, a um, long time ago, uh, the inclusion work really structurally started more in 2002, 2003, when there was already a, a first inclusion conference. And I think when you have people from the, the youth fields, they sort of feel what inclusion is about. It's like, yeah, the extra efforts you need to do to get people on board who, for whatever reason, don't make their way into these programs. Now, because the, the nice thing, as, as Marta said, about these programs, this is the non-formal learning, yeah? Uh, the, the, the clever students, they probably are at university, so they can go on, on the Erasmus uh, student exchange, yeah? If you're in vocational training, you can go on uh, um, uh, Leonardo, what used to be called Leonardo, yeah, but what about all the young people who fall out of the boat, yeah, who are uh, left uh, behind, let's say. However, the at that time, the um, I think it was the programming committee said, like, look, it's all very nice, but in order to know that we are getting somewhere, we need to define it. We were very reluctant, you yeah? know, because the more you define, the more you then also exclude certain groups. Uh, one thing was sure, we wanted to get rid of the labeling. So instead of calling people disadvantaged youth, which was the case when I started, we moved on to maybe young people from disadvantaged backgrounds. And then in the end, it became young people with fewer opportunities. So the young people are not the, the problem, but for whatever reason, they have fewer opportunities. And these are due to certain factors. Yeah, we call them exclusion factors, um, whether that's uh, having a disability or a health condition, uh, whether it's your social situation, whether it's your, your money, what's your educational level or school dropout or whatever. Um, also geographical disadvantage. Not everything is happening in the, the, the fancy capitals, but what about all the other people? Uh, what if you're from a cultural or minority background? Yeah, maybe you don't understand what this youth work is about. So you're automatically also more um, away from all these opportunities. Um, so that's how we started to, to talk about young people with fewer opportunities. So those who have fewer opportunities compared to their peers. Yeah, because then often people said like, yeah, 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 but everybody, uh, when you're young, you, you, you're unemployed or you don't have any money yet. But it's the compared to your peers, which was very stressed always as very important. If in your country there's almost 99.9% .9 uh, employment, like in Iceland in those days, then, of course, being unemployed is a big thing. Yeah? If you're during the housing crisis or after the, the financial crisis, if you're in Spain and you're unemployed, well, you're probably the same as 70% of the other uh, young people. So this comparative element was always uh, very important. Um, and when we gave examples in the, the definition of the people that we were trying to reach, we always added to little points at the end of the description. Why was that? Because we didn't want to lock down the people. Yeah, um, There could be always new target groups coming up. As we've seen maybe now in the, the COVID crisis, people with more mental health issues eh, because of being locked uh, down uh, at home. Or there's more and more this thing about uh, uh, digital addiction or this social media uh, um, disconnection of the reality. Yeah. 
So those are just a few phenomena that we were not talking about uh, 20 years ago. So it's important to keep it open as well. Yeah. Um, so inclusion for us is getting all these different young people in. So, you know, but that's not enough. It's like uh, two sides of a coin. Yeah. Once they're in, you also need to give the young people tools to actually deal with this diversity, to make it fun almost, to make it like uh, an exciting something like, hey, great, I've never met anyone with a disability. How does that work? What am I supposed to do or not? Or to get over all this strange is, uh, um, is something far away from me and I don't want to have anything to do with it. So in that sense, um, and uh, we also appreciate that, the Salto Cultural Diversity Resource Center and the Salto Inclusion Re Resource Center were merged uh, a few years ago. So that now it's it's about inclusion of all kinds, also ethnic and religious, but then also uh, uh, thinking about how do we make diversity a, a great thing? How can we embrace it? How can uh, young people uh, learn to celebrate it? I like the progression in what you're saying, right? Uh, of course, this work mm -hmm. changes over time as societies also change and uh, as as many people bring in their voices and their, their different pi diverse perspectives, right, on the topic and make it richer and greater for all of us, right, to be able to, to feel included and be part of this uh, diversity. Hmm. Well, I wonder, I wonder if uh, from the people who are here with us today, uh, is there anything that uh, you would like to add to, to Tony's uh, definitions um, any perspective that uh, you feel could could be useful for us all to hear when trying to look at these two topics uh, together? If yes, please do do let us know because we would like to have you uh, with us. Maybe unmute yourself and share if you would like to add anything. And of course, this is open for everybody who, who is here. What is inclusion and diversity for you and maybe the difference between between them. Let's see, let's see. Then maybe something to add as well, since now the new inclusion and diversity strategy is for all the sectors in Erasmus Plus and Solidarity Core. And of course, we have lots of different uh, stakeholders around the table. So the definition again is taken a step forward. So it's not 100% anymore as we were used in the youth field. But it's great that also now in other sectors, they are sort of having a similar uh, approach to what we are, um, what we used to be doing in the, the youth field and what we will continue to do, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I see that, Tony, you have been uh, very encompassing in your definitions <laughs> and the people do not have anything else to add. Uh, if you do have, as we move on with, with our topics, please do write it in the chat and we will read it afterwards. Okay. All right, so everything that you have been mentioning so far, uh, your understanding as Salto inclusion and diversity on the topics that you are working with and how they changed, uh, it looks like you're also translating this uh, into, into reality through a variety of, uh, of things that you are doing, right? Uh, both events, publications, and, and so on. So I was wondering if you could explore a little bit that, um, maybe to, to first uh, talk a bit about the trainings that you, you do. I know that they are on different topics, uh, and I wonder if you could share with us a bit what's the work behind that, and how do you choose what is more important in a certain period of time, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, in the beginning there was a, a clear request since we were we, the, the programs were struggling um, to get uh, different young people on board and the usual uh, white middle class Colgate smile uh, students from capitals. Yeah, so how to reach out to those people? So the request of the commission was like, do some training so that we have more inclusion. But that's a little bit difficult to just do anything general on uh, inclusion. So we said, okay, let's narrow it down. For example, focusing on, and that was our first training courses, on EVS in those days, the European Voluntary Service, which is now the Volunteering in Solidarity Corps. 
um, or the second uh, set of training courses was on group initiatives, which now is the solidarity projects. Um, because then you bring people together around something uh, concrete. So it would work more to work towards uh, concrete things coming out of the, the course, you know, concrete projects. However, soon we realized like, hmm, not necessarily the rural youth and the ex-offenders and the gay and lesbian and the um, uh, ethnic minorities have something in common. It's of course very interesting if you would mix them, but often they are looking for like-minded organizations, depending on the topic that they want to address, of course. So that's also when we uh, started with a set of training courses uh, focusing on specific target groups. Yeah, um, but it, uh, yeah, okay, lesbian, I mentioned rural youth, uh, urban youth, um, uh, ethnic minority uh, women, uh, what else did we have? Um, ex-offenders, uh, young people in need situation uh, with a disability, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. However, along the road, there were also other important topics that came up, but it was a European year of something like European year of uh, sports or um, mm -hmm. education through sports. So we did a training course on inclusion through sports, for example, or when there was the economic crisis, um, employability was a big thing. So we did a training course on uh, working on work, like how to improve employability of young people. Um, when there was the refugee uh, crisis, so there were more focuses uh, on uh, that. So, and that's how we went along a little bit. And how do we choose those topics? It's basically keeping our ears and our eyes open, both towards national agencies who have to implement the programs in the different countries, but then also uh, via all the youth workers, the inclusion workers that we get on, at our training courses. And sometimes we even did uh, like uh, questionnaires or uh, more public uh, consultations uh, about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what happens, Tony, in case somebody cannot attend all these amazing training courses that you organize? Or how can they interact ah, with this, uh, yeah, with this true. work that you're doing? Yeah, it's true. Not everybody has the, the time to take off, off work, you know, to, to go to a training course. And also training courses by the, the dynamic is limited to, let's say, 25 people. So what about all the other ones? And we did realize that. And that's why we asked the trainers that were working on our uh, courses um, just to give them a, a little bit more uh, fees, but to turn the courses into a paper manual. So like a, a paper training course, let's say a manual on how do you organize them, um, useful international activities with those specific target groups. Yeah, Where do you find the money? Where do you find the partners? What can go wrong, but how can you solve it, uh, et cetera? Yeah. How do you adapt your program to specific disabilities, et cetera? So we, we created youth worker manuals on that. And maybe let's try another uh, go at the interaction. I uh, have here from my, my uh, library a few um, publications from the past. And you just shut, shout out, so everybody unmute, shout out which target group this probably was about. Village International. Rural youth? Yay, rural youth. Very good. Thank you, Eva. <laughs> Other one, Over the Rainbow. LGBTQI. Yeah, LGBTQI. In, in those days, we were just calling it Let's Be Gay, so things move on. Good. No barriers, no borders. Migration and so. No, that's a tricky one with the borders, yeah, but that's because we're doing international projects. Oh, disabilities. Yeah, disability. Maybe in the drawing you see a little bit better there. Uh, no. Okay, one, one last one. Empower. That's a tricky one. Women. Pardon? Women. Women, and especially EM women, so women from ethnic minorities, because they face it, uh, specific uh, uh, hurdles in doing uh, uh, international projects and stuff like that. Anyway, just to give you a few examples, if you would be uh, interested, um, they are still online, yeah? So if you go to Salto Youth Net slash um, Inclusion for All, there you have the whole list. Uh, I think Maria will uh, post the, the link uh, of what we have. But as I said from my uh, talk, 
things move on and there have been in the meantime quite some programs. So each time all the information about funding becomes outdated yeah, because it has information about either youth program or youth in action program, etc. So what did we do? We just made the best off out of it. And that's uh, inclusion A to Z. So it basically takes the general, general elements from the other publication and puts it in, into one. So this is a publication we still have and we can still send out to, to people, inclusion A to Z. It's sort of a, hopefully a boost for new organizations to take you through the motions. Uh, um, okay, we also did some of the booklets on not so, uh, how to say, um, time-specific things, uh, the, the booklets about um, how to do projects with uh, target groups. They, of course, specify how you get money for it, so that's then outdated because of the, the other programs. The rest is still okay, yeah. But some of the publications are more generic, uh, and I would like to rec recommend a few. Um, here is Making Waves. At some stage, there was this drive within the program how do you have more impact? Yeah? How do you do DR, dissemination and exploitation of project results? And this was a practical booklet, like how do you plan that from the beginning? Yeah? Because if you want to create waves at the end, you need to know in the beginning, like, okay, what are the kind of stones you will find in your project to throw in the water and then create those uh, waves? Another one is inclusion by design. So in case you want uh, your um, to work more strategically in your organization on inclusion and diversity, like what are the kind of things that you maybe don't think of, like how do you reach more with less effort? Um, this is one of the publications about that. Yep. And last but not least, let me also uh, add this one. This is about images in action. So it's not so much about doing Erasmus Plus projects about images of young people with fewer opportunities, but more in general, like how can you raise or, or how can you adjust the sometimes bad image that the society has of uh, certain target groups? Yeah, and then you can think about ex-offenders, certain areas in the towns uh, where you think like, oh, we should not do that. How can you work on that? And that's a quite interesting one as well. It has a lot about uh, uh, like promotion and how to get into the news and stuff like that. So uh, just to give a, a few. Yeah. And the last thing I want to say is, um, of course, not everybody uh, speaks uh, English. So that's why we had uh, some of those publications, uh, thanks to our colleagues in the national agencies and the SALTOs, translated, that's for example, in SALTO inclusion. So there's no barriers, no borders that goes Russian or if you want to know what making waves looks like in Greek or in Spanish or in uh, Turkish, yeah. All the translations, if that is easier for your country or for your organization, they are online as well uh, under the publications. Knowing each time that the part about the money yeah, from pr previous programs, that's outdated. But the rest I think is still very valid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of resources indeed. Indeed, a very rich resource, resource center with so many publications. Uh, maybe I, I would just like to ask you, what about people who do not use publications like this or do not like to go through manuals and read about, about this topic? Is there anything else for, for them to interact with your work? Uh, you, you mean like people don't read books anymore, yeah? It's yeah, true. kind of, kind of, yes. Things move on. And we were talking about that as well. Um, however, when thing I have to specify is that most of our target group, well, it's the NAs, but then also the inclusion workers. So in that sense, we are not so much directly targeting the young people. So there's still a difference. If, if indeed you're doing communication to really the young people and things move on with Snapchats and, and whatever you have and all these uh, new platforms, maybe it's still different for the youth workers. Yeah, depends. That's why I asked in the beginning as well, like what kind of uh, um, age range do we have? But uh, it, it might depend on that. Anyway, we also move on with uh, our time. And then one of the things we did is to have a look at all those resources that we have. And let me quickly share my screen. Hopla. Voilà. 
all the resources that we uh, have, um, how can we deliver them in a more digital way, in an app? So we created a quality mobility app. It's, so it's basically a website that looks good on your phone as well, so uh, it's uh, responsive. And in there, what can you do? You can rate any mobility project, so in, any international project according to European quality principles or, or things that we think, or we think the EPLM, the European Platform on Learning Mobility, thinks that is important. Yeah, so it's sort of a reflection tool, like, am I doing a good job with my international projects? But then the thing I was talking about is when you create a project there, yeah, it's, um, you can create that together with your project partners, you can give them access. You go through 16 different project questions, project management questions. Yeah. What do you want to achieve? Yeah, that's about aims and objectives. In any application, you will need to specify that. So this, tools, this tool actually helps uh, organizations to go through the different steps of thinking out the project. But if you're stuck, you can click the light bulb here, and then you get all kinds of resources, like, okay, how do I define, for example, my aims and objectives? Ah, you could do a needs analysis. Ah, great. How do I do that? Oh, you could ask people, or you could um, do focus groups, or think more in the long term, etc. So uh, that's a little bit the setup. And all these little resources that you get, contextual resources, or if you just want to search them without making a project, it's also possible. All these resources come from the publications that we have. Yeah? So, um, and other publications, it's not only Salto publications, of course, uh, there's many other NA tools or partnership tools uh, that uh, are floating around. Well, that just to, to give us uh, one um, more digital uh, publication. And also what we did now, that's embracing diversity. So we have a few newer publications that came out, uh, I think this year, if I'm correct. Yeah, you see here on the website, they're new, 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 uh, freshly um, from the press. Um, you can um, go through them online. So there's more an online reader. Of course, you can still download load them if you want to uh, print. And what we did is we turned them also into a YouTube video. So if you're not um, into reading digital or paper, um, you can just watch a little video that gives you the crux of the story. Yeah. Another project we've been uh, working on, especially now in the COVID times, it's mainly Enrique that work, uh, was working on that. Um, everything had to go online. Yeah, We were all in lockdown. But then all these online activities, what does that mean for inclusion and diversity? Voila. So uh, we developed a, an online publication about inclusion and diversity in digital youth work. Since it's about digital youth work, we, we thought, okay, it would be clever to do it digital. And in here online, you can scroll through different um, text or inputs on this issue, like, how do you keep it inclusive if you do things online? You know? And again, to uh, create a little bit variation on uh, the, the, the way people consume information nowadays, we now uh, uh, created a set of uh, pod post podcasts, sorry, podcasts. Um, yeah, it's loading, I suppose, which you can uh, get from uh, Spotify or Google or Apple so that you can just plug in your earphones and while you're uh, uh, going to work, for example, you could listen a little bit like, okay, how do you do this inclusion in the digital era? Or what can we learn from it, research about it, etc. cetera. Um, and then last but not least, I already mentioned that there was this um, uh, inclusion by design publication, like how to do strategically, um, how to, set up a strategy to um, be more inclusive and reach out to diverse target groups. Uh, we also now have a digital publication and um, a podcast again on uh, how do you shape this inclusion and diversity strategy of yours. So that shows that, okay, we're moving on with time and we'll see in the statistics as well if this is then becoming a lot more popular and that. Yeah, maybe the publications that we did once upon a time are a thing of the past. 
Thank and you. That's a little bit what I had to, to share, I think. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. There, there is just a lot of diversity of ways in which people can interact with this work, and uh, indeed, just uh, uh, playing by uh, not only preaching but also putting in practice all this. Uh, how can we make uh, this work more more inclusive and more accessible to all people who learn in different ways? All right. Thank you so much, Tony. That that was such a, an insightful way to look at at, at South inclusion and diversity and all the work that has been done and how, how the understanding and the work has changed throughout these years uh, in the past and now in the present with everything that you are doing. If the people who are here with us have any questions about this, please do uh, add it here in the chat and we will uh, give a few minutes in the end of this, um, of this meeting to, to answer to them. All right, so we talked about the past, we talked about the present. Let's try and look a bit uh, at the future. And uh, for this, I am going to, to invite here with us Enrique to share a bit about what's, uh, what's coming, what's coming from Southern Inclusion and Diversity. Yeah, Danny, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, actually, there's yeah, a few things that uh, people should uh, look forward to if you want to to now follow us in the coming months and see what we have been uh, up to. Uh, also share uh, uh, my screen. I'd like to um, show you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, without going, uh, Right away, straight into the future, I um, want, wanted to refer first that actually these this efforts around um, yeah, digitalization and what has been happening now during the, the times of pandemic has been, it has been a very intense uh, time for us, uh, a lot of work that we have been uh, going through. Uh, just to say that in 2018, it was uh, when uh, South Inclusion and Diversity took the first, first steps or first concrete steps into the topic of digitalization and how that uh, affects inclusion and diversity uh, through the um, uh, steering group that was uh, involved in the publication that was published very recently, Social Inclusion uh, and Young People and Digitalization, uh, released by the partnership. Uh, so it was 2018 and then suddenly we are in the middle of the pandemic and there is a lot of things going on. So for us, we, uh, yeah, we, had to try to understand what's happening in the field, what is happening with the projects on inclusion and diversity. Are they uh, carrying on or not? Uh, it was, of course, for us, all of us, a very chaotic uh, time to make sense of all of that. So we started very slowly contacting the, the network, different colleagues, uh, joining events, trying to really map and trying uh, to get a a sense of what's 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 happening uh, during the pandemic. So we uh, started this process that slowly we were joining a, a partnership cooperation with the different national agencies and some saltos on digital youth work. Um, and for us, it started in the end of last year. Uh, so the first part of the process, we were looking at, uh, yeah, trying to collect experiences, methodologies, trying to see how the youth work sector is able to, to continue during, the, during this time. Um, and then we, uh, at the beginning of this year, we started to prepare a survey. Uh, so to collect further information, we launched this survey uh, through uh, national agencies and some, uh, some stakeholders, some organizations that were filling, so filling in the, the information. So telling us how they have been experiencing now the, this process, what were the different tools and methods that they were able to, to use in order to continue their work online. Because it was a very special moment for all of us. On, on one hand, we were confronted with uh, this situation and we had to carry on our work. And it was great. We learned a lot of uh, new tools, new ways of working. But at the same time, it was a process that happened very fast. Uh, and this, this also came with some implications. So we're also trying to, to understand what were the, the implications. And the, the main goal was how to come with some quality recommendations so we can uh, continue our work. So for activities that happen online, blended hybrid activities, how we can... Uh, 
try to ensure they happen with uh, with ensure better quality in them. So uh, we are taking information from the survey that we uh, send to the national agencies. And um, very recently, we also started the expert group process. Uh, so we also gather a few experts on digital youth work, beneficiaries, trainers that were also coming together to uh, discuss how they have been experiencing the pandemic and how we could uh, ensure better quality in the youth projects uh, online or uh, partially online. Uh, so the, what I wanted to share and why it's important for the future is that we are concluding this process now. So this very intense process of uh, collecting information, uh, research, and uh, um, and now we are preparing a dissemination plan. And we are getting, getting very excited because very soon there will be uh, the dissemination of these different outcomes. Uh, plan for the summer, we will uh, share first the conclusions of this, this uh, group process with expert group and, and uh, the survey and research. And then after the summer and the autumn, we are also going to to um, put out there some different dissemination uh, activities. So we're now discussing also with the, with our uh, team and the partners in this uh, uh, snack on digital youth work, different formats. So we're also, yeah, I will try to, as also Tony was giving this a very nice overview of different resources that we are also looking at different formats. So we are also thinking uh, how to explore further this idea of having podcast conversations, how to yeah, use it especially online dissemination in, in various ways to, to share this, this, this information. Um, yeah, what we are also a bit curious about is actually uh, because we are focusing on very uh, in, intensive dissemination online for, for the Ottoman. Once that uh, we slowly start to get to travel and to see again that uh, residential uh, activities might, might happen also, how that will also influence, influence our dissemination. Um, and that also, this thinking is also influencing the way we work now, because uh, for, of course, for a long time, we couldn't uh, do uh, live activities. So we also moved to, to some online formats, uh, but we also, we don't want to, to uh, you, we want these learnings to stay. So we want also for the future that we, of course, go and then do some uh, live activities and it's important for, for our work to, to see our colleagues again and and have all, also put ourselves in these dangerous situations that uh, Maria was also sharing in the beginning. But it's, it's uh, of course, we are very keen to, to go there. But at, at the same time, there are many learnings that we can take from, from this period. And we also want to incorporate that in our activities. So just very uh, so quickly, I will just, uh, share a few uh, things that are now in the pipeline. So in 10 days, Exactly, we are planning to launch the promotion of the inclusion and diversity strategy. There will be a, there's another video that is being prepared and a leaflet that will tell about uh, different opportunities in the programs for inclusion and diversity. And together with that, there will be a quite intense social media promo. Um, then coming very soon, uh, Inspire Week for Inclusion. So uh, this uh, event is also part of the strategic uh, partnership for inclusion that has been running for some time. In uh, every uh, two weeks, there's been a bigger event where also the people that are working on the different topics come together. It's a moment to yeah, share uh, workshops and uh, share practices. Uh, there are three main topics within this uh, uh, project, health and diverse abilities, rural, rural youth and need. Um, and uh, unfortunately, yeah, this is something that was planned uh, to happen live, but because of the situation, uh, we had to move it online. But we were able to uh, come up with a very compelling program uh, online. So for five days, three online sessions per day, there will be uh, different workshops and uh, inspirational uh, input that you can follow. Uh, and normally, the every day will be uh, will start with the, me playing some music. So. There's also another uh, reason to, to join. Uh, and if you haven't re registered yet, you can still uh, go on our website. There is a link for a late arrival uh, uh, for registration. Maybe my colleagues can also share it on the chat. And uh, I also saw that in the participants, there are a few people that um, 
uh, have joined our previous sessions of the IB Talks. So I was also happy to, to see you here in, the, in this uh, session too. And uh, because of the success of this event, we are uh, uh, now planning an, a third edition of ID Talks. We are continuing with the Embracing Diversity series, and there will be five new topics. Um, and of course, next to the, the event itself, there will be uh, outcomes produced, such as uh, recordings, articles, and then all the outcomes that will feed into the ID Talks magazine that we launch at the end of each uh, series. And so stay tuned because the call for registrations will be sent out very soon. And then uh, a bit ahead, uh, later this year, the ID Forum. So this it's the inclusion and diversity event of the year that we are planning. Uh, and uh, the aim is to do it residential in, in, in Belgium, but we also would like to give opportunity for people will not be able to, to travel for whatever reason. Uh, that's some of the sessions will be live streamed as well, so people can also follow, follow it at home. So it will be a moment to celebrate what has been achieved uh, in the programs in the past seven years, to find inspiration so from the different workshops and practices that will be shared, and also to get ready for the new programs. So there's a new generation of programs, there is a new ID strategy, also together with, with, tied with that, we are working on a roadmap, so it's more operational, uh, interpretation and way to show the, the practitioners how we, they can go forward with their implementation of the strategy. Uh, so also stay tuned for, for this event. And uh, last but not least, the uh, on-track conference in its fifth edition is planned for later in the end of the year, um, 2021, uh, 11, 8 to 11 of December. And this is an uh, event uh, focus on NEAT, uh, young people. And it's also very uh, interesting because it brings so the expertise that comes from the youth work sector, but also how we can tackle it cross sector. So how we can learn from the formal education sector, employment or business sectors, what are their experiences with, it, uh, with working with the young uh, NEAT situation and how we can learn from them. What can the youth work sector learn from them? But also we will look at concrete cases where these corporations have been working and they have been successful. And the call for participants will be launched uh, at the end of August. And these are by now the main things that I'd like to highlight that are now in the pipeline that you can look forward to. And uh, also follow us on social media because we have been starting also with the more intense uh, online promotion uh, of uh, of all the work that we do. So you can uh, find us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and, and so on. Yeah. Thank you, Erika. I think, wow, that, that's a lot of opportunities for people to engage in that. That's great. Uh, and I love the fact that, of course, they cater to different needs and uh, the fact that they just invite us to, to think about things differently, but also to put into practice uh, all these uh, uh, different perspectives on inclusion and diversity. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really great. And I, I do invite you all who are here with us to please share in the chat or unmute yourself and um, let us know if uh, any of this information that was shared today resonated with you or it brought up any questions with you that uh, you still feel the need for, for more clarifications or, or answers as we still have about seven minutes from this meeting and we would really like to, to open it up to you and uh, yeah, be in conversation. Danny, also maybe to add yes. all this good uh, news that uh, probably by the end of this week, uh, we will be publishing all the translations of the inclusion and diversity strategy and all EU official languages. So we have them ready in just uh, the, the last technical part of putting them in the in the website, but they will be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you, Marta. Mm. So I see there is no question yet. Uh, I wonder if as people are thinking about questions, uh, whether the team would have anything else that they would like to share uh, as we are getting close to the end, anything that you feel was left uh, perhaps unsaid or 
um, that you would like to add? Oh, there you all are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dani, there is a question or a comment about the quality mm -hmm. app uh, in the chat. Um, but maybe a uh, person who asked the question could clarify uh, a bit, or it's Tony, the question is addressed to you. Is it clear uh, to you? Or you um, a bit more yeah, could you read the question? Yeah, so I think it was uh, Mecca who asked uh, whether the quality mobility app is specifically yeah. for inclusion and diversity, but uh, it is for any international uh, projects. Yeah. It's also set up in a way that it's not only for Erasmus Plus or Solidarity Corps, but those 16 project management questions come back in virtually any application. Uh, whether you apply for the, the Turkish-German uh, Youth Corporation or whether you uh, apply for the, the uh, Youth Foundation of the Council of Europe or other international uh, uh, projects. So normally you will have to provide uh, information about those 16 uh, questions anyway. So in that sense, it's not specifically focused. Although when you go through it and you swipe in the, the resources, like the help uh, function, some of those uh, help resources will be about yeah, what you do now if your uh, target group has specific needs and et cetera. So uh, it does cater for inclusion as well. Okay, thank you. And in how many languages is the quality app available, Tony? Um, for the moment, let me quickly check. We have uh, English, Dutch, Czech, uh, Finnish, Swedish, Latvian, Estonian, Russian, Slovenian, Arabic, and Espanol. And I know that uh, German is almost ready and French as well. So, uh, wow. I see there is also a question from Facebook around where will these reports be published? Which reports? Which reports? That is, that is a very good question. If the person can clarify, that would be great. But I, I do imagine that in general, the work that you do is collected um, uh, on your website. So that could be definitely a place for all, all the, the resources. If, mm -hmm. no, if they're referring to the publications, then uh, the public publications are all available in uh, Salto Youth Net, Salto slash use net slash inclusion for all. I'll type it in the uh, chat and put it mm -hmm. on the Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, also, if I may jump in, just to say that we put uh, already a lot of links uh, in the below the Facebook streaming. So many of the publication and the document we referred are there with the links. So you can just check there and most of the things, if not all of the things mentioned, will uh, will pop up. Um, and then uh, one question, especially about one of these uh, links, which for some reason I care about more than others. Uh, so the digital inclusion website, uh, I would ask you, uh, what if I have a very interesting experience of digital inclusion and I wanted to showcase there on the website in the gallery of the best practices regarding digital inclusion. Is it possible? How should I do? Who to contact? Of course it's possible. If you have a practice, practice to share, don't uh, hesitate. You can uh, uh, write me an email or write to inclusion at saltoyouth.net. Uh, uh, and then I will uh, ask further some questions, but it will be very easy because yeah, we also build this gallery in a way that in a few easy steps, we can uh, add new practices to, to our gallery. Great. Thank you all for, for the questions and for the answers. Uh, it has indeed been such a, a rich session in terms of resources and understanding a bit more about uh, the work that you do and uh, the ways in which people can interact and use all these really good resources that you have developed uh, in time. Um, before we close up, uh, as I see there are no more questions for now, uh, I would like to, to take the chance to, to thank everybody, first of all, for being here and for listening and interacting with, uh, with us, but also to remind you that uh, 
Yeah, this is the fifth webinar for the fifth online session. We are going to have one more. So uh, one more uh, interactive online interactive session happening next week, actually. Um, and yeah, if you are curious uh, at all, as I mentioned, uh, you can see the previous sessions online. But if you are curious to participate in the last uh, session that we have, uh, we have here with us uh, Giselle from Salto Training and Cooperation, who will be sh telling you very, very briefly uh, what is the next session going to be about, just to make you curious and uh, invite you for it as well. Thank you, um, Danny. I, yeah, very, very briefly, yes, I invite everyone to be curious. That's uh, the spice of, of our lives in general. Uh, building on what Tony introduced today, uh, talking about the uh, European training strategy is the very first first step uh, in, 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 the, in the field of youth work at European level. Uh, this is what we're going to talk about next week. So to present you uh, what's the direction the new European training strategy is taking. Uh, and then for all those who will be there and who um, uh, have in their blood the big youth worker identity, feeling and, and traces and history. We will also share a little bit of information about a series of, uh, uh, I would say, quite innovative training courses for youth workers that we have developed. Uh, and if you want to know more, uh, see you on the 24th. <laughs> Great, thank you, Giselle. Uh... Indeed, you have in the in the chat the link to sign up for this last session. Please do so. Uh, we are looking forward to having you there as well. All right, this was it. We hope you had a, a good chance to get to know Salto Inclusion and Diversity a little bit better. Do be in touch with the team. Uh, ask question. Ask uh, anything that would be supportive for you to to make your work even more inclusive. Uh, and more attentive to the diversity that surrounds us. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Please feel free to unmute yourselves, say goodbye, uh, and uh, yeah, see you for the next one. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Hello, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.